Welcome to Love Time Podcast. We did it. We finally made a seasonal podcast that's two hours or less. That's it. Back it up, boys. We can finally go home. But seriously, a lot of good stuff to talk about in the spring, so let's just jump into it. I don't know which one I want to start with. There's 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 plenty to talk about here that I'm actually excited to talk there about. There is. Um, there, there is a fair amount to talk about, I would yeah, say. It's, there's, I would, there's not an exorbitant amount, but there is a fair bit. There there are particular shows, because uh, there's, uh-huh. there's a bunch of shows this season, and I actually am not watching, like, easily, like, two-thirds of them, <laughs> if not I, more. I, did, I, did, I didn't try a lot of them. Um, I didn't have any time. I think, so. I think that's fair. There's a lot that I kind of have just avoided on principle because man like i just unless i've heard stuff otherwise kind of tend to avoid harems these days just because i haven't really seen a decent one i guess i missed out on like quintessential quintuplets last season but like you said it wasn't really a harem yeah Yeah, it's it's been so long since i've seen a harem that i actually reasonably enjoyed (sighs) yeah i'm i'm kind of watching more than i thought i would be this season I don't know, man. Like stuff has stuff has caught my eye. Probably the last harem that I saw that I like genuinely enjoyed, I think, was probably like Oren Host Club. Just because it was a I, very safe one. It, it didn't try to do anything really risque. I would say the last one for me was honestly probably Nisekoi. Gonna be real here. Oh but, yeah, 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 yeah. Because hmm. that was some good stuff. But that's not this season. <laughs> um, well, I mean, no, well, no, it's not. But uh, what do you mean? Well, you're yeah, about to go I, into something else. I, I mean, it, like, could well, it could always be this season. It could always be this season if you're watching it right now. Okay. Okay, it's not currently airing this season. <laughs> yeah. Smarty pants. Yeah, and then there's also just plenty yeah. of other shows, um, like Shinjuki no Kyojin three part two and One Punch Man two that I just haven't seen the original, so I can't I can't get into that. Yeah. Yeah, as of, of recording, I don't. Ish, Attack on Titan season three part two isn't even set to drop for another couple days. So. Oh yeah, really. you're right. Okay, I see that. Yeah. But uh, I guess along like sequel seasons, I am watching Bungo Stray Dogs season three. And oh man. I'm, I you should really watch it, man. It's very much your speed. I um, I like it. Really seemed like it whenever the the original series came out. And mm-hmm. I just, I just have not gotten to it yet. I really don't have a whole lot to say about it, um, just because a lot of it kind of requires, you know, some some knowledge and investment in the original gotcha. two seasons yeah, yeah, yeah. and then film and all that jazz. But I watched like I mean, half of the first episode, and I kind of didn't really understand what was going on because I was like fading in and out as I was watching it. So. Wait, did you watch the first episode of the third season? <laughs> no, 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 the first episode of the first season. Oh, uh, I mean, okay. the first season's fun, but it it really hits its stride season two. Uh, it, in my opinion, didn't really fully know what it wanted to be until season two. But There's some shows eh. like that. I mean, even Next Generation had a real fucking rocky first season. But yeah. that's, yeah. But, uh, so it happens but yeah. to things. Yeah, it, it, it really grew into its second season, and the third season's really great. So, I mean, if you have liked anything you've watched of Bungo Stray Dogs so far, you're going to like the third season. It's worth a go. It's fun. A can, lot of it is can, pretty almost exclusively, like, flashback prequel stuff. Hmm. But can you sum up, like, what it is in, like, maybe a three sentences? Probably yeah. not. Um... If we're getting into the third season. No, not well, the third. I just want to know what the series so. is like. Oh, like, okay. Um, you mean it as a whole. Okay. Yeah. Ragtag group of armed detectives who are uh, famous literary figures have superpowers and oh. duke it out in uh, different factions in okay. Japan, in modern day Japan. So, I mean, like... Um, The second season has some uh, major antagonists that are famous American authors um, and things of that nature, like F. Scott Fitzgerald is their leader. 
almost like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen kind of is what it's yeah. striking me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, like they're not their actual like uh, authors themselves. Right. It's yeah. not like they've been transported to another time, but that's that's their names or their abilities or things of that nature, and so they're and, and off of that supposedly stuff. a little bit of their actual like personality of who they were. I would assume. Yeah, that and some of their powers reflect some of their personal writing, things okay. like that. So, okay. um, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, I don't, I've seen people compare it to things like Do Ra 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 and such, which I mean, like I I kind of get it, but it's also definitely not that like. It, I see it in that there's a lot of weird supernatural elements to it, and it's a big ensemble cast with a lot mm-hmm. of folks in a bustling modern day Japanese city with weird hijinks um it's a lot of fun it really pulls into a a stunningly mature interesting story season two um cool yeah i don't know if if you're looking for something to watch and you don't really know what you're feeling and you want to try something new i'd recommend giving it a try i love bungo stray dogs i powered through the second (laughs) season in like a day damn Mm, yeah. it, I mean, it sounds interesting. So, yeah, it, 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 it's 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 fun. But it, again, it, like it's a, it's a third season. I don't have a whole lot to go into right now. Right. But yeah, the little bit of the saw of the first season, I was like, oh well, this looks interesting, but it looks like an investment. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it is. There's a there's a lot of characters to get to know and understand, and then ultimately kind of really genuinely uh fall for in that sense so they're they're good folks are there any other sequel series that you guys have been watching Mm, Um, no because i fall into the same problem that you have i just haven't seen a lot of these shows yeah yeah i mean like i'm i'm hyped for attack on t titan season three part two but that hasn't dropped yet and i've watched the first episode at one point that web help uh, the first episode of One Punch Man too, but I just I haven't kept up with it. Gotcha. Okay. Partially yeah, because I... like it's it's through Hulu and uh, going through oh, a twenty right. some minute going through a twenty some minute episode oh, with gosh. ads. That yeah, yeah I forgot like we're back in this age in where Funimation has shows and Hulu has shows. Yeah, it's 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 a wild. We're back. We're back in this age. I feel back like. in the commercial break age, which it's a fucking ordeal to get through that. I don't even. I don't understand that, especially if you're paying for it. Anyways, um, yeah, no, um, I haven't really seen anything else that's like there's a sequel of it coming out. Uh, I did mm-hmm. see a thing that's a, a reboot or a reimagining. Oh man, Fruits Basket. It's so good. Did you have you guys ever seen the original series? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, I have to say, as somebody who has seen the original series a few times, actually, because that was one of the things that like, it's funny. The original series is like super, super sugary sweet. And so like my my sister and I, whenever we're watching it, we would just like put on marathon through like about four episodes. And she's like, "Okay, I can't take this. We're going to have to watch Firefly or something. Watch somebody die. (laughs) Um it's uh i like that it's it's keeping not only the plot but a lot of the characterization and a lot of the more interesting ideas from the series as well as some of the sound effects honestly like the uh the explosion sound effect i believe is the same for whenever they go into a poof of colorful smoke and that 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 in itself is like a similar design too and i love how much that they're like keeping what made the original great they're just modernizing the the actual like writing of it. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, right. just telling it a that. little bit better, giving it a little bit more of a modern take on the cinematography, and it works so well. Um, because like some of these scenes are basically like almost like word for word or like shot for shot. They're just done a little bit better just because it's been some time, so there's been some more improvement in the anime industry. Um, especially when it comes to the dog guy. I can't remember his name. Um, I don't remember any of their names. But the uh, the writing for some of these characters, when this show came out, it was very, very mid-2000s in that it was, like, wild and wonky. And, <laughs> and then mm-hmm. they've t- really toned that down and made it a lot better story because of it. Like, you still have comedic moments, but they're just done a lot better. 
Um, yeah, as as someone who hasn't had any contact with the original, except that it exists, I found that I am liking this quite a bit. It's real um, good. And it, it, yeah, I mean, like, it is very pretty. Uh, it has a hell of a budget. Um, it's got a really wild, like, adult contemporary OP, um, which feels really, like, 90s nostalgic. Mm-hmm. early 2000s and yeah i, I mean like uh, i don't have anything terribly profound to say about it because i mean it's it's kind of just uh you know rom-com with a the weird quirky like zodiac twist to it right. yeah, i think it's a lot of fun mm-hmm. um and that's that's about it I, it's really fun i don't really have any issues with it yeah uh, i matt you go Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say that I I I liked it. I didn't think I was gonna like it. Um, actually, really? even though I kind of like those sorts of shows, I I don't mm-hmm. know. Like, I just kind of figured that like I'd always heard it described to me as something that was just like a lot of sugar, and I was like, I've, I don't I've know if I'm no, I don't know if I'm times. really into that. But I mean, it's not really <laughs> that. I don't know. I don't really see it like that. So it's just well, normal. So yeah, you mm-hmm. can see a little bit a little bit of it in the characterization of the main character because she's very much like I believe in the good of people. Um, but comparison between the old series and the new series and this new series, it comes off as very like just genuine. Whereas in the old yeah. series, like it was the whole thing of just like <gasps> breathing in deeply and sharply and slow look at the beautiful boy and like all that stuff and you still have a little bit of that but it's definitely toned down it's not nearly that type of like saccharin that the that the original series was mm-hmm. um, mm. and i i just genuinely appreciate it especially because that's one of my favorite things about this character is how genuine she is and yeah Tora's a very good girl she is such a good person and her mom is the fucking best <laughs> like I know. I hate that we're only getting flashbacks. Of her I know because cause she's so cool. <laughs> she was like a genuinely amazing mother. I love it. It's such a wonderful and validating thing to have a, a mother character that like is uh, alive. Me. Yeah. It, well. Okay. <laughs> but wow. She's no, like, I'm being serious. <laughs> well, th- I mean, there is that. Yeah, the fact that it's it's somebody that that had died previously, and so she only can remember her or can only be with her in her memories um but i think it's i think it's such a nice thing to have a mother that while she was around very clearly not only loved her child but was not overprotective Mm -hmm. was not like getting in her way she was just genuinely trying to raise her daughter to be the best she could be like it's so good it's so nice i didn't mean alive i meant that is present uh yeah word choice i and i (laughs) i like because the the original series i don't know it's been a while so i can't speak to the balance of this but in the in the in this modern take i very much appreciate that you have these more goofier moments and these comedic things in which these characters are like turning into animals i mean in like the last episode that i saw like uh rat boy i can't remember his name um oh yuki yuki like or soma so whichever yuki soma is his full name right yes okay he gets turned into a rat and they're just like walking across the bridge back home and he's having like a super serious conversation but he's just a fucking rat (laughs) like it has very comedic moments but it also is able to balance those very well with some of these darker undertones to the series Mm -hmm. like the fact that her mother is dead and that's like a genuinely like really still she's still very much in grief over it and then like you have these family dynamics that you're only starting to learn about and and they start getting like a little darker um and so like it's really cool to to see them deal with all of that um and balance it between the goofier moments yeah but also like having discussions about like classism and privilege and things of that nature as well because there's a whole thing between uh kyo and yuki where kyo our cat boy wants to be part of the soma family 
because he's always Yuki been left is out. Like, yeah. Right, and Yuki's like, why would you want to be part of this? I don't understand you. And so it seems like there's going to be a lot of interesting development between that. And I'm yeah, the, deni- the dynamics between those two are amazing. The fact that you can have these two characters, that it's not like the cat is always pining after the mouse and the mouse is just, you know, uh, just a better person. It's like, this is who you should be. No, it's they're both jealous of each other because they both want each other's life. And and yeah. so there's and so that's why they're constantly fighting against each other because like they're jealous but like I I love the idea of that dynamic and and seeing that develop over the course of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love fruits mm. basket. I was so stoked whenever I saw that this was coming up this season. I was like, fucking what? I actually didn't hear anything about this previously. So it was like whenever I was just looking at what shows were coming out next season, I was like, what? Oh, I've no I've been hearing about it for I think since last season the start. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 So, but uh, but yeah, it's 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 fun so far. I yeah, like it. I would I would I would say it is enjoyable and fun and good. It's yes. It it, it also just on a personal level means a lot to me because it was one of the first. What would you call it, Josai? I mean, it's definitely shojo. Shojo. Um, it's, it's one of the first shoujo works I, I ever actually watched. Um, and so like having that, that more love story character perspective from the girl, having the girl as the protagonist, um, it mm-hmm. meant a lot to me because that was something that I could watch with my sister and we could both get real down with it. Um, yeah, I can take that. Yeah. And so that was, it was one of my first experiences with that. And, and, and so it just has a little warm place in my heart and I'm so glad that it's like so far being represented really well. I can't remember though because I, I felt like the original series was twenty four episodes. Because it was around I, it was around that time in which they they just like hired you on for twenty four or twenty one instead of doing the one core two core thing. I th- I thought it was a longer series personally. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought uh, I thought maybe it was longer than that even so. No, I don't I don't I don't think it was twenty six episodes. Twenty six episodes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested in that because I'm wondering how much they're going to try and adapt from the original series. If they're just going to do it as a one core, two core, or if they're going to try and like reduce down 26 episodes to 12. I'm not well, sure. I mean, like, it, I mean, if you look at the OP, the under, like right below Fruits Basket, it says first season. Oh, does it? Does it really? Yeah. Oh, in the I... OP, yeah. Like, if you look at any of the posters for the show, like literally, it's you know, food oh. it's a basket. Oh, so they're probably gonna season. split for it. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm down. Hundred percent down. So, That's what I was hoping. I, I was hoping yeah, for cur- that. Yeah. Currently, the number of episodes for this season is unknown, but uh, we know at least it's going to be two seasons. Okay. Minimal. Absolutely down. So excited. Yep. So that'd be fine then. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I'm getting excited. Oh shit! I was saying 2005. This came out 2000. One. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's uh, early two thousand. It's pretty old. Damn. It's dated. Okay. In a couple years, this thing can drink. <laughs> <laughs> it can it can vote. <laughs> it can For vote. The show on... can vote. Fruits basket can vote. <laughs> can it vote in Japan? Has it been twenty years? Oh, it can vote in the United States. <laughs> Um, what's, whatever anyway what's one that you guys uh, were looking forward to and managed to watch this season Matt um why me um I mean, haven't talked <laughs> no, I mean we don't we don't have to we were just um, opening the I, I brought up Bungo Stray Dogs he brought up Fruits Basket so yeah. um how about uh Hitori Bochi I like oh, I yes. like I like that show my gosh yeah what what I, uh what 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 gets you about this show, Matt? Uh have you seen the main character lately? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen any of the characters in that show at all? It's it's kind of like someone took you and then split them and, and split you into a couple different people. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the feeling I get actually. 
I'm like, like the I watched the first couple episodes, and I'm like, wow, I am like different parts of all of these people. Oh, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, Bo- Bochi, Nako, and Aru are all you in some different way. I feel like and it's I might astounding. be. I feel like uh, I I might be Satoka though. I don't know if you guys have gone to her because I don't think that episode's come out yet. Episode four. No, no, no. Okay. I don't know who that is. Is that a? Uh... She's our, I think, I assume, our resident uh, foreign girl. Yes, she is oh, a foreign okay. exchange student. Yeah, we haven't gotten that far. Yeah. Um, I f- she speaks to me, I think, on a, on a particular level. <laughs> um, I I actually have history with this show before the sh- before before the show actually came out. Yeah, didn't you like read the manga or some shit? I have been reading like so. I'll get home from work and I'm stressed out my fucking mind. And I just need to relax. And it's like, it's getting towards bedtime. So I'll just like curl up with my phone. And I've just been sitting there reading through the manga for this. For, I want to say about six months now. Oh my god. And so, like, this was my schedule. Is that I would go home and I would read a couple chapters and I would go to bed. Because it was just such this genuine, like, heartwarming, cute, a wonderful thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, when when you guys showed me that this show was coming out, I like I was like on the verge of tears. I was just like, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh man, it's 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 so good. I gotta point out, by the way, the ED for this show, in which they're using the actual manga panels, but they're doing some fun stuff with them. That's fucking yeah. sick. I mm-hmm. love that. Yep, yep, it's some next level. Shit. Yeah, it's pretty I good. Love it a lot. It's also it's also really great because then you can see a side by side comparison of like how they actually looked in the manga, which is almost genuinely like dead on to how they look in the anime like yep. like they just were ripped right off the page it's wonderful yeah i i i have been a huge fan of the manga for for a while now so i i was so happy to see that this was getting adapted if for no other reason because then the joy like that good feeling that i was getting before going to bed everybody else can have that now <laughs> just on a on a weekly prescription on a weekly prescription get your dosage Oh, no, this is a good show. This is such a wonderful show. They and are man, such I, good kids. They are such they good are. kids. I, I did find it interesting because at least the translation that I was reading for the manga um, for, uh, I think it's Aru, right? The uh, the vice president. The... Our third girl. The unfortunate girl. The yeah. unfortunate girl. That's the interesting thing. In the translation that I was reading, um, Nako always calls her a loser. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she keeps getting really pissed off. She's like, I'm not a loser. And then like headbutts her. <laughs> um, yeah, and and, it, and really it's the same thing because it's just that, that whole idea of just like shit keeps happening to her. <laughs> right. It's not even necessarily something that she did to herself. It's just she keeps trying to be better than She's who she is. So and then the unlucky. universe says No. <laughs> Life just happens. I feel yeah. like that a lot. I'm glad that they kept the headbutt thing in because that was one of my favorite things. It becomes like a recurrent joke throughout the whole series and it's wonderful. <laughs> I, just, I, I love the image of her completely like parallel to the floor headbutting somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. The the more I sit here and we talk about this, the more Matt I really do see you resonating in each and every one of these characters. Each and every <laughs> single one. It's of kind them. of yeah. freaking me out a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, especially probably Nako. But I like, I think I think when you're at when you're in your prime, Matt, when you're when you're feeling good, you are definitely a Nako. Um, yeah, I can see then, that. But then whenever With the, uh, like following of Aru. Yes, especially if you're especially if you're playing Link to the Past Randomizer. You, you there is a lot of Aru there. <laughs> <laughs> um and then definitely some some Bochi. Um I uh I also just think it's really sweet to have a series that's it's not too serious, but it is talking about general anxiety disorder basically. Just just the idea that someone can have so much anxiety in social situations and not know how to act and behave in them and how they're able to overcome that just a really great message yeah. yeah oh my god i just want to just i just want to tell bochi it's gonna get better yeah i the only thing is i just it's wish gonna be that, okay i just wish that her friend wouldn't just abandon her like that it makes me so sad 
<laughs> where it's like, no, you gotta, you gotta be friends with everybody else before you can be friends with me. It's like, no, yeah, what, what, what the heck? Who does that? It's pretty extreme. It, it's it's kind of like Kai, her her friend, watched an anime and was like, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that to Bochi. <laughs> Anime is, uh, anime is okay. I can understand from a friend's perspective that if you're moving to different schools and you're worried about your friend, trying to make them, force them in a situation where it's like, no, 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 you can't just rely on me. You have to be able to rely on yourself. You have to do this yourself. And so to push your friend to do that uh, until you guys can meet back up again in high school, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. The way she goes about it, <laughs> where it's like, no, we're not friends anymore. And it's like, no. Yeah, that's don't, horrible. Don't do yeah. that, okay. the Bochi. Oh, okay, okay. But, but she did give her a do your best fairy, which I want one. Oh, it's real do, one real do your fairy best. <laughs> <laughs> she like that one. I'm excited for you to see some of the other people, some of the other, excuse me, some of the other <coughs> doofuses in this class as it goes forward because some of these some of these little children are just they're amazing (laughs) oh gosh okay yeah anyways Uh, it's a good show (laughs) it's a real good show (laughs) i like it it's 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 very good um i'm sorry you killed me man (laughs) (laughs) i don't know why it was, a, it was a good <laughs> that time. One just really got you. Uh, um, now you're just of, wishing you thought of that. Speaking of fairies, has anyone watched Fairy Gone or is it yes. just me? Uh, oh, I have not yes. seen the latest episode. I think it's good. Three I'm not. I'm not like super caught up, but yeah, I've seen at least a little bit. Of I've it. seen the first two. I've seen the first two. Okay, yeah, I've only I... seen the first one, but that's fine. Uh, okay, so. I really like that PA Works decided that they were going to do an alternate world version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and <laughs> uh, just have like fairy tale stands. Oh, it's, it's great. See, I kind of got like some weird persona vibes out of the first episode. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah, also yeah, going to yeah, say yeah, that yeah, one if yeah. I didn't have JoJo. But this is it. This is super JoJo Part Three and on and Persona three through five it's fucking great i love this shit a lot they um, there's there's not as much show. to laugh at compared to whenever i've watched an episode of jojo <laughs> not quite because it's very uh-huh. like what if you had jojo but world war one <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be real like there's a lot of edge to fairy gone uh, like, like, like not that you know, much not, not, like not as much as there could be maybe no, 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 no. possibly yeah. The Evanescence style OP for this series. Uh, uh, don't use shit on that OP. It's, no, 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 no. It's, this oh, is not OP me is on good. It. This is me it's, reveling in it. That I, that OP is like. I don't know. I guess season. I didn't really get the Evanescence vibes. I really I didn't either. But, really? Okay. Um. Yeah. But I, it's I just, just you. It, it, yeah, I wasn't. I, I wasn't looking to say that like this show is so edgy that it's bad. Like it is. It is a moderate amount. It's a tasteful smattering of it. Yeah. And it leans into it in such a rad way, but also does not just like fall face flat on it. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it's a fun show. It's one of those that I... definitely like has an edge, but it actually uses that effectively instead of just like just it's kind of funny because you could say it, like most other shows that have an edge just use the blunt end. <laughs> like yeah. they just do it horribly. <laughs> I just I I, I kind of think that you know the 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 weird fairy supernatural element of kind of taking this general idea of a supernatural creature and mm-hmm. flipping how we generally perceive it is an interesting thought in and of itself. But I feel like the way that it is balanced out and tempered by the alternate past wartime setting is very interesting, and I feel like it does a good job of making it a little more believable and balanced out in a way. And I think that mm. whole like turn of the century World War One vibe works really well for this idea of like the old world of folk and fae, um, and the new world of science and modernization. Because they're yes, th- they're literally so. not only burning down these these forests that the fairies exist in, they're literally ripping the hearts out of these fairies and transplanting them into humans in like weird really weird and messed up scientific experiments. 
So like that's that that setting works so well for them in, in that sense. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a real sucker for that, and they've done a good job so far of of keeping a lot of. Uh, we're in an alternate fantasy setting. Here's an info dump to like a minimum. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. To, to be fair, it doesn't have that quality that a lot of fantasy shows tend to have, where they're like, "Ah, oh, look at all this information." Yeah. Now, to to be fair, I did start watching the third episode, and I had to dip out because I had to go do something. Mm-hmm. But I was about halfway <laughs> through it, and it did start treading in that territory a little bit but i mean but it does have got... to give you something yeah well no no what i was gonna say was the fact that they got until the third episode until they yeah they didn't do it all great the first like, step you know like, compared to uh, fucking congratulations yeah like awesome. i think the last one that i was that i can think of is like yojo sanki which like first episode they're giving you oh the yeah yeah um, man like yeah I also... fairy gone is doing a great Sorry, job you... of it so far yeah I also like that for Fairy Gone, um, I like the idea because Japan loves to play with this setting of for like World War One. They really mm-hmm. like it for some reason for their for their more darker shows. Um, I I really like the idea that instead of being in the midst of the war, this is like uh, it, it, it the war's done, you know. Mm-hmm. The, whoever lost lost and it's just now you're seeing just the after effects of that and the the rebuilding and it's like that's that is fascinating and interesting to me yeah it's also great to not have you know a show that kind of does this that where it's like every have other a fucking nazi equivalent that's really cool yeah it's really nice that. whenever you're not watching yo it's Cindy. really great <laughs> sometimes yeah it's real cool <laughs> i i appreciate it I, I, I mean i was just thinking like there has been so many fantasy war shows i mean you if you look at like yojo sankyo you look at izetta or you look at uh mm-hmm. or the like, the one witch show the uh, century witch century witch what it came out like a few seasons ago never mind just don't, don't okay yeah I, I don't know what you're talking about um okay but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of shows that use like the war element, and they're like, ah, but it's got to be fantasy too. And then they like pair them together, and it's like about battle and politics, and yeah, like, and I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm a little tired of these kinds of shows. Let's move on to something else. And Fairy Gone mm-hmm. is like the uh, the better version of those shows because yeah, it seemed, they seem to move past that a little bit. So yeah, yeah it's like those things are happening and they are happening around our characters, but this is a character focused story about Maria trying to like resolve this past that she has. Like mm-hmm. and it makes sense but, of it. Yeah, but also seeing like a good old free underbar dealing with like PTSD and also trying yeah. to kind of grapple with the demons of his past. Yeah. And I, yeah, that that that's pretty much it. I love that it is this refreshing character drama driven piece as opposed to like let's uh, get in hey, the world hey look at these hey, things we happening wanna, yeah we want to be gundam but not in space and bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much i um yeah and it's like on to its credit like a great example of that i think is the is one of the few battles that we actually saw which was like a bit of a flashback um or actually, it's in the first episode. The uh, one of the first battles that we see is actually like the postman, like the or the I don't know who you would call them, but the person that like has news and is trying to deliver it to everybody else because they don't have phones yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's him running through the battle, saying, "The war's over. We lost." Yeah. And so yeah. it's all yeah. these soldiers that just stop fighting, and you see them just throw down their guns and walk away. Like that's a great moment. Where you see, like, some people like, no, I'm done. I'm putting down my sword and I'm just walking out of this. And then other people like, how can you fucking do that? Like, after all that yeah. we fought through. Like, gosh, that's such a great moment. <laughs> and, and, and it really is because it's it's fascinating to see how these characters have moved on post-war in different occupations. Because some have gone through, like, super legal means. And some have decided to go into, <laughs> like, an underground illegal trade. And right. it is all very heavily character motivated because you know whether it is free joining a actual organization or his buddy wolfran who is doing super illegal stuff to try to support his his wife and daughter yeah and and, and also and also supporting basically like a militant terrorist group at this point right that's trying yeah. to still fight the war even though the war is gone 
yeah it's it, it's fascinating and yeah. like or or even veronica who is just a war-torn child that just wants revenge because of what's happened to her yeah. and happened to I, everyone she knew and loved it, I, like this show really should be as good as it is i really don't think it should because it, it has all the trappings of a show that should be an absolute like edge fest that yes. you watch when you get pissed drunk but it's actually really fun and genuinely interesting when it's not being super info dumpy which is again few and far between i will say uh, there is one note that i'm i'm a little worried about so far is that like they showed maria as being an insanely capable individual but she just hasn't so far been able to express that yet and so like not not in her normal like actual like shooting the gun and getting some shit done in a mission or with her fairy um like we got one moment where the fairy was the badass but not necessarily her and so i'm hoping it's not like a psychopath thing where you have an incredibly competent protagonist but they're not able to express that because the other characters are a little bit more focused on um i'm hoping that that just doesn't happen i mean it is 24 episodes as well so we have the context of like two episodes yes i think that it's just very much she's the protagonist and she's at the start she's not She's not getting towards the yeah, end. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was... Yeah, it's, it's a two Oh, it's 24? So okay, a, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of time for her. Yeah, yeah, then that makes total sense, because, like, once again, yeah, this is the protagonist at the start of her journey, so... Yeah. But yeah, it's it's rad. Um, I was very surprised by it. Genius I love surprised. it a lot. Yeah. 3D is also very tasteful. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's only yeah, really yeah, used yeah. to basically show you the more otherworldly aspects of the show which then just kind of better helps the plot this idea that these fairies are like weird and and true. And, and not the norm of humans so like that is having true. them being the 3d in the show actually kind of benefits the show that's true you know true what that. uh is even weirder though what sarah's on my oh man problematic fave dude i i saw i'm so here for this show i saw a quote recently on twitter and i cannot verify it but i believe it's the one that you shared earlier today matt about how the creator for this show when he originally was getting it approved (laughs) just just completely ignored that there was gonna be butt stuff (laughs) Until he got the okay for the show, and then he went hard on the butt stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was in the article on A and N. Yeah. Okay. That okay. Was so exact. verified. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and yeah, apparently uh, the reason that he got away with it is because nobody just said anything and decided to stop him. <laughs> like one of those everyone, like he gets back from the meeting where they okay it, and he's like, "All right, we got the okay. Remember, all of you." No talking. Don't don't ever tell anyone about this. Just wait. <laughs> well, and then like it's like I guess I guess the work had started on it, and then he like people were like, "Is this kind of weird?" And and like <laughs> like well, it's not. They didn't say that though. Like that's the thing. Like no one said that. And he's just like, "I okay. I I guess we're just gonna keep going." <laughs> like nobody's <laughs> saying anything. Nobody's stopping me. No one cares. Okay. It reminds me of um, and this is on the western side of the world. Um, you know the Animaniacs, the uh, writers for that show because it was a Steven Spielberg produced show, had a habit. Of every single time that they made a script, they would try to put the most fucked up and raunchiest shit in it that they could think of that could still maybe get away with it on TV. Like fingerprints? Yeah, like fingerprints. And and they kept on throwing these scripts at Steven Spielberg to see which one he would reject, and he didn't reject any of them. <laughs> so they just kept doing it. <laughs> Just like up in the ante. <laughs> yeah, just they just kept upping the oh, ante no. to see what they could get away with. That kind of does feel like the two episodes of Sarah's on that we have so far. Yes, uh, the two episodes that I've seen that is absolutely oh. what I've seen so far. Ah, the Goatsy Show. <laughs> oh, man, like. <laughs> okay, so Sorry. I've killed both of you now. So so uh so wild thing 
<clears throat> I actually had some context for the show going in. Oh, really? Um, How do you have context <sighs> for a show like this? But okay. <laughs> uh, it's through Fibbage. Through Fibbage? Fibbage? Um, uh, so there was a final Fibbage uh, that I was in the midst of like a month ago um, that actually was a question about like, in Japanese folklore, the Kappa... Uh, take this orb, which is located where in the human body? Oh, no and, oh, shit. Uh huh. Yep. And so I found out about the whole idea <laughs> <laughs> of of the 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 anus orbs that <laughs> so that are located in people, and and so I I saw the synopsis for the show, and I was like, oh no, oh, what? <laughs> oh no. And yeah, I, I was I was watching it with Morgan, and um, oh, I bet both we, of you fucking died. <laughs> and we got to the you know our the the musical bit where they just pull the orb out of the cardboard box monster. Yeah, and we're just kind of looking on, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this from Fibbage. And she looks at me, she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I would also have that reaction. That yeah, that's like... the appropriate response. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember this from Fitbitch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so uh, that, that doesn't give anyone any context for the show whatsoever, but I kind of feel like uh, it's hard to actually give a discussion or context for this show. I will say this. I appreciate that there is at least one musical number in every in every episode so far. Oh. Yeah, possibly two in the case of episode two when they have a musical number in the middle of the fucking police station <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice. honestly i'll just i'm i'm just happy to have mawa Wauru penguin drum too that's really what it is like if you've ever seen penguin drum this is pretty much like a spiritual successor to it yeah i mean from like the background characters being like a walk like crossing signal people to just the weird kind of like general tone and atmosphere that the show sets to the like magical is. transformations that are like straight out of a really fucked up like uh, power rangers or super sentai yeah it's it's eerily close man like you can you can absolutely tell that <laughs> That this is a an Ikuhara production yeah oh. all of the shows are like this <laughs> it's amazing i will say there are a few things that i don't like um when it comes to like these overtly sexual things about the show and it's not the ones you would normally think of i think i mean there, there, there's definitely some issues i like I'm, I'm a little bummed that our chaotic bummed. glass is gay is is present matt oh. matt i didn't mean that it's a good pun but i didn't mean it <laughs> um, sorry continue yeah, I, like I guess I'm slightly bummed that our our good glasses wearing chaotic gay is like, you know, in a weird position where like he he is framed as a weird kind of yeah stalker in a way. I'm I'm interested to see how they tell this from episode th- like starting episode three onwards because the ending of episode two in which you have this chaotic gay character that then Inta. that then just like let's be honest sexually assaults somebody while they're sleeping like it's not okay it's not okay i, I mean if, if, for context it's like a kiss while they're asleep but like they can't consent to that so they I mean, absolutely yeah. cannot and 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 yeah. you're like oh well it's just a kiss yeah but that's still fucked up and that's not good for the one gay character we have so far in the show to be doing that shit that's uh that's not okay so I'm, anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that there's a little bit better rep- representation going forward as far as yeah. that character goes. But, like... Yeah, there, 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 there's some minor issues, but, I mean, like, I'm so... I'm ride or die for this show because this scratches every itch I could possibly want because musical number, got it. Uh, Kappas at all, got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a weird supernatural element in an otherwise normal setting, got it. Um, fucking... A basically penguin drum atmosphere got it like as well as like penguin drum character dynamics also between the various different characters so far checking all the boxes yeah yeah i i, I love this i love this show a lot 
I and it the, has the only thing a is fascinating I just amount need... of like character arc and development yeah. so far, and I am I'm so here for it. It's easily a contender for like my <laughs> show of the season right now, but it, it just has to hold up. Can it do it in eleven episodes? I think so. That's what uh, that's the uh, main concern that I've seen. This that, dude, at least what people uh, confess, at least. But yeah, this dude every time he makes a show, just like. Just don't stop, man. <laughs> Just keep doing these. Well, I mean, like, I guess that's a fair concern, though, because Penguin Drum was a two-core, wasn't it? Yeah, it it's, was. And yeah. so was so was Utena, but, like, um, Yuri Kuma, that was a one-core show, and it wasn't, it didn't hold up as well, I guess, comparatively, although that's, mm. like, a really high bar to set. Yeah, so, and I feel like there's still a, a large percentage of people that enjoyed Kuma, wasn't it? Yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot yeah. of people, I mean... <clears throat> That was a very widely popular show when it aired. So, yeah. oh, I didn't know this dude did Yurikuma Rash. Yeah, it's I it's a ride. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's a ride in of itself. Uh, Which okay. does go to show that he is able to between Kuma and Utina, he's a, he is able to represent uh, homosexual individuals pretty well. So I'm I'm kind of like giving him the benefit of the doubt as far as like the the ending of episode two. Yeah, but he can. Do I don't it. know. Like, I kind of feel like talking about the show and trying to describe it is really doing it a disservice. Yes, this is just a show I mean, you like, need to I... watch. Oh, Matt, what? Go. Oh, it sounded like you were about to say something. Oh no, I was just saying watch the confusion. I mean, pretty much yeah, because like I don't want to just say yeah. this. I feel like I say like this about a show mm-hmm. at least once every podcast. In that, like, I don't want to do a, a disservice by trying to describe it, but I mean, like, how do you describe a show about young dudes that transform into kappas and suck the soul out of people's butts out of like zombie monsters in a parallel universe? I was gonna say, yeah, around, like, in a parallel boxes. universe that only sometimes happens, but it has di- direct influences on the other universe, and then there's a whole bunch of like other bullshit with like some random cops going on, and we still don't know what the fuck is up with that. Yeah, because like, I mean, like, trying to talk about this sounds like we're high, <laughs> and it's not good, right? <laughs> it now. sounds like I you think... watched a fan version of Madoka Magica that someone made when they were like on drugs. Like, <laughs> like, do not throw souls. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I, it very much reminds me of um, the 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 joke from Donald Glover in which he was talking about that uh, the the synopsis for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sounds like a homeless man's rant. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and they all live in a sewer, and their and their and their father is a rat, and he and they all like pizza, and he's like, get the fuck away from me, <laughs> just get away. That's exactly what it is for this. <laughs> like, it's like you start explaining, and people are like, what? <laughs> what I mean, did you just say? I mean, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, just watch it. It makes more sense yeah. watching it than it does describing it. <laughs> yeah. So weirdly, I know that's hard to believe. But. <laughs> you will get it in 23 minutes way faster than us trying to explain this for the next two hours. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it's good. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so excited to see more of that. Um, Something that doesn't take two hours to describe, though. Uh, have y'all watched uh, Demon Slayer at all? No. Yeah, I actually I have. don't know anything Matt, about oh, it. I have. Yes. I have watched it. <clears throat> Matt, how much have you watched? I have watched one episode. What did you think of the one episode? I thought it was act- I thought I wasn't going to like it and then I liked it. Like I was yes, I was pleasantly yes. surprised actually. Oh man, so. that was me too. Um so like uh a demon slayer is basically a uh a a shonen uh about slaying demons made by UFO table. Or UFO table? How the fuck do you pronounce it's that? UFO table. Either way, UFO table. UFO table? Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. that's easier. So, so, so it's it has a uh, it has a, a fate budget um, for a not fate show, <laughs> and which is saying God, something. it's pretty. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Matt. Like, I didn't really expect the show to be anything terribly special, but wow it's cool um i mean it kind of says it on the tin like 
it's about slaying demons um yeah when you first when you first said that there was an anime out here called demon slayer i was like you mean like doom 2016 the anime <laughs> i mean it it does not have quite as much of the rip and tear as that <laughs> does and tear but until it is yeah done. i mean like like if you can imagine essentially um demons existing in like 1920s japan Ooh. um yeah so like veroni taisho era, era japan that, like, is what yeah, this that, says yeah that turn of the century yeah okay yep 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 so i mean like um it's it's really interesting it's basically kind of a, a demons killed my family and now i'm going to kill demons sort of thing it also looks Except like they have a bit of a dead rising 2 vibe where like the sister is a demon is what it says yeah, in that's the what i was gonna say it, it's it's kind of like a demons kill my family and now i'm gonna kill demons but it's more like a demons kill my family and then turn my sister but she is an okay demon and so i'm not gonna kill her but i'm gonna kill the rest of the demons and try to find a way to turn my sister back i assume that there's going to be some dialogue about how like maybe not all demons are bad or something like that um, or is it just demons are bad okay <laughs> like i mean sort of yeah okay. that, that's kind of the overarching thing <clears throat> but there's something magical about old, old tanjiro's sister nezuko that uh still has her bit of humanity in there okay yeah and it's yeah. definitely not as edgy as it sounds either. <laughs> it's it's really not. It's yeah. surprisingly heartwarming. I think that's why I initially passed up on it is because like it's one of those things you read the synopsis and you just make a quick judge on. I the, mean, on when the show. you think of the title Demon Slayer, yeah, that's Demon all you Slayer. Can think of. You yeah, read the synopsis I mean... and then you see that it's a shonen. You're like, all right, uh, let, let, what else is coming out this season? <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 dude, it's super worth it. It's it's yeah, it's, it's actually very heartwarming. Pretty good. Go on. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, it's heartwarming. It's good. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty stylized, I would think. So, mm-hmm. again, yeah, it's it's got that fate budget, and God, it's pretty. I'm not, and it's. Hmm? Oh, I was I was just wondering, maybe Zach, you would know if uh, like, do you know if that's like two D, like over three D, or like what's going on with like the effects in that show? See, that's the thing. I've been trying to figure that out without actually doing any research on it. Um, I feel because like I'm going to need to watch the PV to get what you guys. You are really about. should, because it it looks like a weird like 2.5D show, if you can think about it that way. 2.5D. Because, because yeah, it has a lot of really dynamic action shots that look like. It's shot on like an actual like 3D base in some ways, but with a lot of like hand drawn animation over it. It's gorgeous, whatever the hell they're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's very pretty. It looks, it, great. it looks good. I just don't know mm-hmm. what it is. <laughs> I yeah, was just wondering and a lot if maybe of you knew. Um, is it one of those things no. where like the the animation itself is is 2D, but they're using a lot of 3D effects in order to make it look cool? It could be uh, somewhat. It could be. I yes. know. I know. UFO Table was known for that, especially in their fate shows, um, and maybe mm-hmm. that's what it is. <laughs> but it looks a little bit more than that in some instances. So I don't know. Okay, because I've actually. Yeah, that... It's one of those interesting things where I went to where, where I went to school to, for game design. That's one of the things that you find out with like the parallax and various things from like old Super Nintendo games. There's actually multiple planes that you can work with, even yeah. though it's just like a 2D game. And so you can kind of right. trick it to make it seem like it's more than what it actually is, just by using a few effects. Yeah, so like, I, it's one of those things that I would like to talk about, but I don't know anything about yeah, it, so I'm not going to purport to know what I'm talking about, so. But, yeah, I don't know, I mean, like, it's it's got a lot of really pretty, really well choreographed, like, fight scenes and things of that mm-hmm. nature. It's really interesting in its concept and execution. Um... I mean, it's it's kind of spoilish for the first episode, but I mean, not really. Like when his sister Nez, when Tanjiro's sister Nezuko gets turned into a demon, there's this whole subplot of this other dude that seems like he's going to be a mentor figure comes in and is like, "You got to kill her. She's a demon." And I really kind of figured it was going to be, "Oh, my whole family died, and now I have to kill my sister, and I'm going to kill every last damn demon." That's but... what I actually thought it was going with too. Initially. I really did too, and like I could feel my eyes rolling into the back of my skull, but it super didn't end that way, and it was really refreshing. Like mm. it's 
it's kind of turning a lot of like really tried oh, and tired okay. like s- shonen tropes on its head yeah it's nice i'm i'm watching the pv as we speak and i'm starting to see some of the effects that you guys were talking about as far as like because there's like a one thing in here where it's him running through like a snowy forest and the trees are mm-hmm. very much on different planes than yep, he yep, yep. is as he's running um yeah that's interesting okay yeah i i I don't have a whole lot more to say about it other than that. Like, I I just think that if you're looking for something that's shonen adjacent that isn't like every other shonen you've ever seen in your life, Mm -hmm. I'd say give this a try. It's genuinely worth a shot. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. As somebody who's kind of interested in in the representation of all the characters, how is the sister portrayed in this one? Is Is it very much like... She's just kind of something to be protected, or is she actually an active in- ingredient in the story? I-, I think that's my only major concern right now. Like, I feel as though she, Nezuko, has the potential to be like a real strong and real good contribution. But as the last episode I've watched, she's been in a coma for a year and a half. Oh, good gosh. Um, <laughs> so she doesn't exactly hold, have a ton of like agency slash screen time hopefully the, i get the it's one of those things where it's like hopefully it changes it's another 26 right, it's episode, also a 26 so. episode oh it's why do we keep saying that at the same time there's there's a <laughs> lot of two cores <laughs> this season aren't there yeah but i mean like so so uh, again it's early on it's a shonen um like, i'm kind of used to this stuff and i'm kind of used to seeing the long growth of development so. Right, it's just one of those things where I'm I'm interested in even from an outside of like a feminist perspective. It's it's also just like boring whenever you have a character in the show, but then the character doesn't do anything. So I'm... <laughs> cough cough, Asuna season two sort art online. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> how do anyway. how do we get to there? She didn't fucking do anything. They took the she, most interesting. I mean, character you're right, the but and then the one show. time she tried to do something, then they just rape her. So. Yeah, okay. Anyway, we're Anyways. not going to sort our online in a fucking spring 2019 cast. Okay, Let's yeah, not. moving on. Um, I'm sorry. Please, no. I, I passed on this show, so Demon Slayer, so I'm going to I'm gonna actually have to add that to my watch list, because that, that sounds yeah. real good. You will not regret it. Yeah. Probably. Can we talk about some of the short shows this season? Oh, oh I was man. I and, was waiting. And, I was And by that, can we talk about those? like the one good short show this season? Before oh, yes. hang on, before you get to that one, can I mention a couple that I actually tried out beforehand? Sure, because uh, Kyle, what what did you do that wasn't Senrio Shoujo? So bef- so I whenever I'm reading a manga, I'm willing to try anything for a few chapters. Even if even if I read a synopsis and I'm like, this is gonna be a piece of shit, I'm willing to try for a couple of chapters because usually they're only like what no, twelve good pages on you. long. You have an incredible degree. I did. I did that too. But yeah, good on you. So one of the ones that I tried was uh, Nande Koko ni Sensei Guy, which is what the oh fuck? no no no! I why didn't the, watch that. Why one, the hell are so... you here, teacher? I saw the poster for that and I was like, this is straight shada. I'm staying the fuck away from this. Oh, no, trust me. Within the first panel of the first chapter of the manga, I was like, yeah, no, this one's not for me. (laughs) The entire, because it's fucking stupid. The entire concept is like, it's a dude who like, oh, by accident, keeps finding himself in situations in which like he is basically becoming insanely sexual with his teacher and his teacher doesn't push him away. Yeah, it's a hard pass for me, dude. That's a hard pass. That, uh, that that's like a that's like I, I, no. It is no. not okay. Uh, it is varbad. Now, on the flip side of that, well, not on the flip side, but uh, on the on the more medium <laughs> medium side of that is uh, Joshi Kasai. Um, which I don't know. Yeah, in in English, it just says Joshi Kasai. Okay. Um. Have you guys even, like, seen an episode of this? I saw an episode, and honestly, that was about, like, the, uh, I was going on a rain of short shows that I was dropping, yeah. and I dropped, like, five in a row, so I was like, wow, this is just, we're just racking up the points here. I was wondering I'm how many really shows I was like, going to drop in a row. <laughs> I just, I, I straight up, again, saw the poster for it, I saw the synopsis, and I was like, I'm not wasting my time. It's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. That's what I'm I thought. I'm really, really, really 
sad about this one. Because I actually read the manga, and I still read the manga for this one. This is one that I still read on, on occasion. Um, because the whole, I love the idea and concept of telling a story without any dialogue. That's very mm-hmm. cool to me. Um, but the actual implementation of that in, in this is so far not great. Now, granted, the actual dialogue thing is not the issue. It's like, there's very strange things going on with the cinematography and the animation as far as this goes. Like, there was a scene in which, like, a gr- one of the main characters is holding an object, and literally every time that they cut to that character, she's not holding the object, or is holding the object, then not holding the object, then holding the object. And I'm like, did no one uh, proof check this? It's so... I mean, it's a, it's a short. The is probably so now. It's the Wild West. It's... And there are some times in which the animation, like, literally gets, like, real bad where it's like somebody's walking away and it's one of those scooby-doo things where they're clearly walking in place Mm -hmm. Um, and i'm so disappointed because the manga is actually really fun this idea of you have these three carefree girls that are just doing their daily lives but it there's always some weird twist to it and usually it's okay usually uh, I will say, in the manga and also very present in the anime for some fucking reason, is um, they're apparently trying to adapt a lot of the more um, voyeuristic chapters of the manga. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, if you watch the first episode, I was just like, this is garbage. Which is so fucking strange, because what sold me on this originally, the very first chapter of this manga, is that uh, the main character is, like, on her way home from school, and she's, like, darping around and having fun, and she's just doing these, like, crazy little antics with, like, she meets a cat, and then she, like, meets something else, and it's just funny. It's, like, small little slapstick without any dialogue. Um, but then she starts doing, like, these fun little tricks with a, uh, with a, a cone, like a, a construction cone. And uh, and then it just jump cuts to her waiting for the train to pass, and it's the um, the consistent character in the show, the the um, the worker San, the uh, the salary man. Um, he he looks to his left and he does a double take. He's like, wait, what the fuck? Because it's just her. She didn't want to drop the cone, but she was on her phone derping around. And so she just has a giant cone like sticking out from from uh, between her legs. Not like skirt wise, but like like she's holding onto it with her shins. And it's just there. And he's like, the fuck is going on with this girl? <laughs> and it's just a really funny moment. And that's why I started reading the manga It is unfortunately one that becomes a little voyeuristic, and I am not a fan of that. But a lot of the chapters are actually more slapstick and more of just these cute little moments of three friends who just like each other a lot. So I'm just so disappointed that the anime is, like, fucking dropping the ball on this. Yeah, that's really unfortunate, and that seems like such a weird a way to try to adapt that but i mean yeah i I guess if it's a short show and there's a specific audience they're trying to cater to i guess so yeah but that's that that's really disappointing yeah i'm i'm so sad because that's another one that i've been reading almost as long as bochi um so um and it's not like it's not like bochi where i'm like oh gosh this is so good it's one where i'm clearly aware of like yeah this is like five out of ten um for a a number of reasons but like it's just one that i was disappointed that like there could have been something for it and then they just really are dropping the ball on it bummer but anyways those are the two that are bad uh you obviously didn't watch like all the other shorts right (laughs) no no, um because they're even worse I i was reading the manga Oh really? Do you even, They're do even you even worse? Want to talk about them? Do you want to give us like a quick rundown? Well, I mean, let's see. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you about now. probably the worst one where this guy that is like Nobunaga in in like a I don't know like his heir or something. Nobunaga his lineage. Sensei no Osanazuma. Yeah, like oh, just, yeah, just the read fucking... the synopsis and like that. A basically... middle school teacher who has a knack for gal games and a 14 year old perfect prospective wife who is an expert on the Sengoku period. The fuck? Um, Wait, yes. so it's pairing a teacher with a middle schooler? Uh, Yeah, she comes to the world and she's like, hey, let's have a child. 
That's the first oh episode. My and my god. And think about think about this shit. Think about this guys. Like this is how I started out the season. Was this like just going through the shorts and seeing this. And I was like This was your first short yeah. this season? Well, I was just going through my alphabetical well, order, or however I had them sorted, yourself, but... like, however any chart sorted them, so. Listen, on a plus about this series, at God. least you started with the bar as low as it could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't get any worse, right? Um, oh my gosh, please don't tell I me it got worse. Can't... Uh, I just I, mm. and I literally almost puked in my mouth whenever you ex- whenever you said have a child. Yeah, um, it didn't get any worse, but it didn't get any better for a little while. Um, okay, all right. What's 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 the next one? Well, there's that here anymore. That uh, Alchan wa Benkyo Oh yeah, she she has the horny grandpa or something. Yeah, she has a what? horny grandpa that he's like all about the titties. Um, like he eats like yeah, titty that was pudding. Also hard pass um, for me. it's just weird. Um, yeah, I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> just it's 2019. What the fuck is going on that this is a thing? I watched another uh, short it's, where it's uh, there was the whole not plot. Stopping anyone? <laughs> there was another short about uh, there was a guy that had to uh, had a job where he was uh, washing. Girls' backs in a hot spring. Oh my so, fucking gosh! Like, I <sighs> like it's just like this is like as I said, this is how I started the season. So I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be a horrible season if this is what we're getting to start to. Oh my gosh! Okay, okay Sinryu girl is yeah. very good. Yeah, hang on, hang thank on. God. One last thing. One last thing before we get there, what, because I Kyle, do what? listen. No, 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 no. I do want to talk about San Diego because it's very good. Um, but uh, Matt, have you seen Isekai Quartet? Because I was just interested. No, I hadn't. Okay. I, I think that's probably the best short of them all, honestly. Um, yeah, because just it, based it, on the, the premise, premise. <laughs> right? The premise is just, hey, here's all these characters from all these different shows that all belong to the same company, and they're all just goofing off. Yeah, that's wonderful. Like that, there's fun. no good. way that can be bad. The only way that could be bad is if, like, all of a sudden, in the middle of them doing a cute little skit about, like, ha ha ha, let's make fun of the Nazi girl, because it's really funny, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just becomes the grandpa from that other show, just, like, burst through. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Anyways, Sinryu, uh, which is another one of the shows um, I have not... I have not read the manga um, as much as I did Bochi. This one I actually started uh, a couple of months ago. And I've only read, like, I want to say five chapters. Man, it's 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 fun. This has such a great cast. It's, it's, re- it's, it's okay. real good. Um, it's real good. I, yeah, like, I say I mean, real it's, good it's because not, it's, not... it's just so comfy to me. Yeah, so, like, it's I say it's very good because, like, it's a really good short. It is a really uh, good short. Because I've seen a lot of very bad shorts. Oh, uh, yeah. Me too. So my bar is very low. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, you clearly stated that you have seen horrible yeah. shorts, Matt. But, like, the the cast composition so far, real fun. Nanako, precious, good poem girl. Eiji, great, except for when he's like, you're looking a little fat. But aside from that, he's pretty great. Um, occasionally he has his moment as like the dumb protagonist and it's annoying uh-huh. because it is it, it, and also because there are other scenes in which he's very clearly not a dumb protagonist and you're like mm-hmm. what the fuck yeah uh, uh our our club president amine she is basically girl. all of great. us <laughs> she is the so self-insert much. for all of us watching She's this perfect. romance happen yep um yeah, like the the whole premise of this girl only communicates through haiku is fucking rad. I love it a lot. That is good, especially because there's some great haikus. It works so much better than I thought it would. Like it, it's an idea that on paper sounds <clears throat> okay, but in execution, real fun, very wholesome. Yeah, um, it provides a lot of good goose, but also a lot of heartwarming moments. Yes, also. I think I'm the dad from the show. 
Um, <laughs> the dad's the best character. <laughs> the dad is the continually most relatable character and also gets the funniest shit. Um, Where he's like perpetually anxious about everything that has to do with his daughter. Nanako's dad is perpetually having a mental breakdown to the point where <laughs> he is crying about his girl going on a date and his son says, Mom, Dad's doing it again. And I <laughs> scream <laughs> like that. Oh, it's I so love that. good. I am... Like, don't get me wrong. Nakano and Eiji are, are great protagonists, but I live for this show's side characters. This show's side character is actually really good. Even the, I... like, sister-ish it's character so... that they showed is actually a pretty good character <laughs> overall. I... Yeah, oh, 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 Kota is pretty okay. The the sister, uh, the big sister Onesama, who's not actually a big sister. She's ha-ha, just like blood related, their but... neighbor or whatever. But and but I like that they very much very early on don't say she's not a love interest. She's very much like I could have been, but I'm not going to. That's just not my choice. Yeah. And uh, I also want to point out that like this has got to be because I constantly thought of this whenever I was reading through the manga, and you would have these haikus. Um, or which they would actually make them haikus in English as well. I'm like, this has got to be really complicated to translate. Mm-hmm. And, like, get the same meaning across or get something similar across. Um, I also think that it's very cool that... Um, <laughs> I have a few... I actually have a few screenshots on my phone from some of the panels in this manga because it was great. <laughs> Where I was like, uh, this was most likely... F- formed in the shape of a devil this little wiener and they're like no i'm pretty sure that's just an octopus not a <laughs> not a <girl. laughs> uh, and then um they kept this one in the show which was if you want to learn more about me please visit my personal my blog, blog. <laughs> 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 and she's like in the the cla- the the prez of their clubs like don't be lazy about this <laughs> it's really funny the Matt, uh, the best one so far, which I don't know if it'll be in the show, but I really hope that it is, is is one that spoke to me personally, in which she was like, "This Nanako here has an amazing stomach and mad Smash Bro skills." <laughs> I really hope that's the actual translation because it's really fucking great. That's very good. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Matt, like. So, so compared to the other shorts that you've watched... <laughs> okay, yeah, this is gonna be, uh, it Fucking sky's the limit, man. <laughs> like... Yeah, but, but no, like, for real, like, uh, what has spoke to you about this piece? Um, it's got haikus. Like, okay. haikus are good, innately. Um, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Super duper. Hondo percent. And, um... Pretty much, like, I don't know. I really like the atmosphere of the show, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, I, it just feels like it's a spring show. Like, it really does. It is. Like, yeah, I don't, it's... I don't know how much of the, the, uh, sampler posts on my, on the blog that you read about me talking about the show, but I, it was, like, I really like the show. I just really think it could have done a lot more. Like, like in just in terms of like the atmosphere, like they mm-hmm. really like I feel like they really had that springtime vibe going, and I think they really could have pushed that. Like they would have pushed that harder with the animation. Um, but I understand it's a short, but yeah, very much so. Like I, I definitely get what you mean because I mean they they had an opportunity at the very beginning with the first episode because I mean they start off with hey let's do a springtime theme. Or I think it was specifically an April theme for their poems. Yeah. Or for their haiku. And so I, I definitely know what you mean. Because, like, um, Tanaka Kun is always listless. Um, did a killer job. Right. Of exemplifying that kind of, like, um, seasonal atmospheric tone. It to had, it. like, a really good summer vibe, like Tanaka Kun did. Yeah, like, it did. Like, and, it, like, and, like, that wasn't the focus of the show, but it was, like, a good show. And then it had that, which made it really good like right like and, and that's kind of what i wanted from this show like mm-hmm. yeah and it just as I, a spring vibe instead yeah 
Like, because yeah, I remember you, you talking specifically about Tanaka Kun, and I I'll never forget this, but you said that watching Tanaka Kun is kind of like having uh, an open window on a breezy summer afternoon and like taking a nap on your bed. Yeah, or something that's, like that's that. That's kind of what I and, said. Yeah, yeah, and so I I definitely kind of feel like yeah, Sinryu Girl has a lot of the trappings and the potential to do something like that. But it's not quite leaning as hard into the comfy spring vibe as it might. Mm-hmm. Like, but. like I don't know. I just I felt like it, it, it tried, but I don't know if it had like I don't know if it had like the staff. Like they, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want to take it that direction. I don't know. It's still a good show. Like I'm not I'm not right. saying it's not. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of things I really like about the show. I'm just like man, like this could have been like a hit. Like a uh, yep, bop, yep, yep. you know yeah like it's it, it it's fun i like it a lot but in in terms of it's a what good it short show. presented yes yeah yep, yep, but nothing more so. than that yeah i i, I feel you there so but, that, that that's what i think so yeah um um that's all of the shorts that i watched i good thing watched this one congratulations yes, clearly <laughs> You chose Um, wisely. (laughs) mm -hmm. Um, Now, I have also chosen poorly this season. Oh, no. Oh, no. What have you watched? Robihachi. Oh, Oh. buddy. Let's get into that. Matt, have you seen this? No, I haven't. Okay, so it's just me and Zach. Yeah, Yeah, so I'm I'm going to try to figure out what the heck is wrong with this show, I guess. Uh, It's more like what's not wrong with it. Um, All right, hang on, you... hang on. <laughs> let me let me state that I actually enjoyed the first season as it was going, or first season, what the first, first the first episode as it was going. How how could you possibly enjoy it? I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I grew up with like shit tons of eighties and nineties anime, and this is very much a callback to those. Um, <clears throat> okay, yes, yes, I understand that, but okay, so. Robbie as a character yeah. is absolutely unbearable. Oh no. <laughs> there is not a single oh, yeah. redeeming thing about him. Here's the thing though, like, is that like in a lot uh, not in a lot in the better of those 80s and 90s animes, that's how the character starts and then they actually genuinely become like a really enjoyable individual. Well, okay, I, I, I'll I'll yes and that, but like at, at least the insufferable characters in those early 80s 90s shows Mm -hmm. had something redeeming about them from the get-go that's like there were some things that made them insufferable robbie is just objectively shit he is very much a piece of shit like i thought that i might enjoy the fact that jps19 his robot assistant is constantly tearing him down and the fact that uh hachikita is also constantly tearing him down even though there's yeah. a there's definitely a play of like both are dumb but in their own unique ways kind of thing um so, but like, the, the thing to me is how do you essentially like take space dandy and like like outlaw star even yeah how do you take any space hijinks show yeah and take the central core and focus of it and just make it so utterly uninteresting i don't understand it's like they didn't even try like i think because because the 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 base premise of absolute shitbag that is running from debt collectors at some point and who is then matched up by a quick-witted robot and a straight man that's like the polar opposite of him go off and do space shit is a perfect formula again it's kind of space dandy yeah in this sense but it's just bad and again i, I don't know how you can try to like mimic that formula in some way and just make it so utterly uninteresting because like it's so so yeah. So Dandy, absolute asshole, total shitbag, but he's lovable, and he's interesting, and he's got layers to him, and Robbie is just loud and obnoxious and not really that interesting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things where, like, it almost seems like they took the idea of, like, 
the roguish Han Solo type where it's like, you know, fuck the system, I'm down on my luck, but it's whatever because I make buy. Um, mm-hmm. And they completely ignored like the past 20 years of telling that same exact fucking story. And they just went back to like the 90s or 80s and just had a character that was a piece of shit. And there's nothing redeemable about that character. And you're like, this is our protagonist. And it's like, why the fuck am I supposed to relate to this person? Right. And, and like something that's so incredibly fascinating is that like the, the little bit of background we get about Robbie is that he came from a rich family, like super rich, super privileged family and decided, I kind of don't want this and went off and did his own thing, but kind of continued to be an asshole. That's the thing. Keep yeah. That degree of like privilege there. There's no degree to like relate to him. And uh, even it's also- though he's a complete idiot, it's because he's just an idiot not for any good reason yeah it's very much um <clears throat> it's very much the the like the song the common people from pulp or it's this idea of like a rich kid that's playing around being poor and then is mm-hmm. always relying upon the fact that because they weren't born poor that they can that they can still have the attitude and the and the um aesthetic of like uh, yeah, but I'm if I if I really you know am down on my luck, I can just always rely on mama and papa or like and that kind of like piece of shit mentality. That type of like I come from rich, so therefore you know even if I'm not doing well right now, I'm still a great guy. It's like yeah. no. <laughs> oh jeez. I, I I think the biggest issue for me is like I I got all the way through the second episode. You did better than me. I I ac- absolutely cut it after the uh, <laughs> halfway through the second episode when it starts getting into the like the octo the octopus prostitute or whatever. And yeah, like going into so that. the prostitute. So so I thank you, man. <laughs> Bless you. I wasn't on top of the puns. Yeah. So I I mean like with the initial idea of the episode being uh. Robbie's running from debt collectors. Hachi's along for the ride because, oh my god, this is interesting and this is something I haven't found before. And they get to Mars where there's a bunch of these octopi aliens that are on there. Um, And it it turns out that they're actually all humans on there, actually, just in octopus costumes because of like some Orson Welles, like War of the Worlds shit. Yeah, um, I didn't get that far, and I, and I, I I hated it because that was one of the few things that I like skipped ahead in the video and like caught a glimpse of that, and I was like, but I'm just not gonna finish this episode. Yeah. And, and so here's the thing: it has interesting ideas to it because I think the idea of Mars becoming a tourism-based planet mm-hmm. because of like Earth's expectations for it You're is right. fascinating because it has this very like solid degree of like. A, a sort of almost like colonialism kind of degree of criticism to it. And yeah, I think it's, it's like there are these interesting. there are these genuinely like actually pretty cool topics that it's skirting around, and also like there are these good jokes that it does occasionally, in which I'm like, that actually is a pretty good joke. Like I yes. like that, and that's what makes me so goddamn yes. mad about this show. Yes, <laughs> because it has so many interesting little nuggets to it that if put in a more competent show could be great but this show the show just fucking sucks i know oh, I, hate I hate it, it when so shows much. do this yeah i know and like I, I i think the most beyond that is that uh, for the whole first two episodes we we're presented with robbie as this absolute like dumb fuck absolute idiot shithead that has no idea of common sense or courtesy or respect or anything. And at the end of the second episode, um, the daughter of like the, I don't know, mayor of Mars or something is trying to convince her dad, like, Hey, we don't have to do this octopus shit anymore. Like we can just be who we want to be. And Robbie comes in with some like, mature intellectual like bullshit about like yeah like how are you going to you know own up to others and love you know others and such if you don't face up to who you are yourself and i'm like no you've set this whole fucking thing up so far of you're an absolute dumb shit who knows nothing you don't get to come in and be smart about this it's not even a funny joke it's just like totally dissonant yeah for no good reason like fuck off you're this isn't interesting 
and like i don't mean to be so mad about this show like i I honestly like don't mean to go this hard on it but wow dude like i just wanted something that was even like maybe comparable to something like cowboy bebop or outlaw star or space yeah and i'll even feel like hey it doesn't have to be cowboy bebop it can be like a kind of okay outlaw star or like a kind of okay space dandy and i would have been like yeah that's fine Because, like, that's how I feel about, like, this exact premise. Not, like, shot for shot, word for word, dialogue by dialogue. But this exact premise was, like, shown to me recently um, with the anime, with the, um, the anime short uh, Starship Goldfish that has, like, three episodes Mm -hmm. out or whatever. Um, It's trying to get backing as, like, a full project. Anyways, it's that idea of, okay, you have this piece of shit that's in charge of the ship, but then you have all these other characters around them that actually create the dynamics and make things interesting and the jokes actually land. And in comparison, it's just a fucking joke to see, like, how this show is going. Like, <clears throat> it's just so... It's it's just disappointing. It's, it's like we talked about uh, with Guilty Crown. It's one of those that, like, you can see all of the elements that could have made this actually really cool. And it just completely undelivers on every single one of those. It, it really is a bummer when shows do this. Like... Uh, it's just like you see the sum the sum of its parts is just so bad but then you see like the little snippets and it's like oh like that could have been something good like had you like i don't know done something just better with it you know yeah it's i would argue i i remember um my roommate valerie actually said this and when she was like whenever i was trying to explain why i was not enjoying guilty crown to her Mm-hmm. Um, and she hadn't seen the show, but, um, she, she said, so it's like whenever you watch a show and because you know that there was something good in it, that you hate it all the more <laughs> for not giving you it. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like you're feeling betrayed rather than just being like, oh, it's a shit show. I can write it off. It's that you can clearly see that there was something genuinely interesting about this, but you feel so betrayed by the fact that it doesn't do anything good with it. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, to be fair, I didn't watch the previews or read the synopsis and think this is going to be a good show. Oh, really? I, I was under... I feel, no, I I feel w- that I was, I was in a minority. Because once again, it very much seemed like 80s, 90s, like, sci-fi, goofy shit. And so I was like, okay, I can give that a shot. I was pretty solidly annoyed with the cast by watching the previews. So... That that may be the I, difference I, is that I only read the synopsis. I didn't see the PV. Uh, see, I'm I'm pretty religious about that at this point. Um, to the point where maybe it colors my judgment in not watching some certain shows, but also like at the same time with I, something like this, you kind of got it spot on. Yeah, but anyway, it's kind of hit or miss with the PVs. Just... I feel like, but I mean, to, if some people watch, yeah. some people don't. You get different things, you know. Whatever. I will say, right. as as somebody who I guess has a little bit more patience with this style, um, of just like piece of shit captain some other characters in the show that kind of thing um and who grew up on like 80s and 90s anime i thought it was interesting that like as i was finishing up the first episode and you told me that you hated it uh, the show in general um i thought it was i thought that was kind of interesting because my perspective was always like it's okay i mean it's not great but i can still watch it and then i got into the second episode and, and and it's at that point that everything started to fit together in my brain in which i was like oh Oh, all the things that I was hoping for, oh, they're gone. Are gone. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like. Don't get me wrong. Like, this thing is a big old pastiche of a lot of things that separately I like. Yes, because like, it the, very the, much the is whole, ta- like, taking that idea of like Space Dandy and and applying those ideas of like, hey, you remember those old anime that used to come out? Let's do a parody of that. Yeah, because I mean, like the whole fucking like mech robot transformation at the end of the they first spin, episode. They spent like, like the... ten minutes on making fun of Voltron. <laughs> like, yeah, like it was fucking great. Yeah, I, I like the the general concept of that. I but thought again, that that was like... going to be the rest of the show. Is like, oh, okay, so this is going to be like Outlaw Star meets Voltron, except for they're making fun of both. And I was like, yeah, okay, but, cool. And then the second season, uh, the second episode was bad. nothing like that. Yeah, so I mean, like, I don't want 
go super harder on this than I already am and just this be a really I feel salty like we episode. tend to dwell on the things that we don't enjoy when it comes to this podcast. Yeah, so like I I'm I'm going to I'm going to recuse myself from yep. this discussion yes, from yes, here yes, on yes. Out, but I just don't understand I... how a studio comic could mess up a space show. Like your name is Studio <laughs> Comic. Like how do you even do that? <laughs> What have they fucking done? Probably nothing. Uh, a little brutal. I feel like you're being a bit judgy. <laughs> well, let's Let look. Here. I have not seen a single one of these shows that they have done. Uh, they did Binyan, Coco, Chichu, Bobe, Happy Kiss. Uh, the fuck okay, is they've, that? They've done Captain Tsubasa. Uh, some initial D stuff. Okay. So they actually have uh, some history done, with these space shows then. They've done a lot of Jewel Pet, Jewel which Pet, I've yeah. never heard of. And a lot of Onigai My Melody. Oh, they've done some fucking... Oh, is that School Rumble? Sanrio shit. I see some School Rumble. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. so it's shit I've never watched. Okay. Initial D? No fucking way, really? Uh, well, they did one initial D thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, my mind was about to be blown. I was like, oh not, man, not, not like not like the OG initial D. I was I was like, no. I did something. What a fall D. from grace. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I'm 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 good. Yeah, I'm I'm good. I I don't want to shit on the show anymore. It's it's one of those that I'm just I'm just sad that it. it went the way that it did because it could have been cool and then it just wasn't yeah i mean like if it's your speed cool but like i'm i'm utterly uninterested yeah at this point it's got <sighs> a it's just one of many shows on any any chart here that's got a little sad face next to it oh wow i mean there's there's I... most of the shows this season guys are below like 70 percent i mean that's not terribly surprising um I'll, there's a lot of them that are like below 60 actually um but uh we'll not go into that um i will say um i can't speak for its quality but i did notice by the way that um this company has done suzuka which apparently i've heard is a well-regarded anime but i think suzuka? It's the, yeah mm. uh although that's i heard the manga is okay yeah, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's well regarded in the sense that, like, uh, I remember the people who told me this are, like, really, really into those, like, boy saves the girl kind of concepts. And so, like, I, I in very tropey. It, so. is, it is one of those romance series. Um, I watched yeah. something like that one time, or at least something that was by the same author, adjacent, or mm-hmm. s- something, something related to that franchise and it was it was okay it wasn't great but it you know it is it's exactly what you say it is so <clears throat> yeah but but anyways yeah so that's that's Robohashi. um what else have i watched this season i'm trying to remember i know i've got like one more show i've watched yeah i got what like it, one more uh matt you and i both watched um because we started this podcast talking about how we weren't really into harem uh, well, specifically me and Zach talking about it. it's been a while since we've seen a good one. Yeah. Uh, how about you talk about Bokutachi? Okay. Sure thing. Um, so, this is one that I've I've also seen, I think, two episodes of. Okay. So this is, this is kind of an interesting one. Um, so I went into the season, like, I, I looked at the season a little bit ahead of time uh, when Winter was airing, and I was like, oh, yeah, Bokutachi, like, that's one that a lot of people are really hyped about. Like, I looked at it. I bought the first volume of the manga, like, several months ago. I read it. And I was like, oh. oh really? Yeah. Like, I was like, okay. Well, I'll, I'll read it. And I was like, oh, this is actually, you know, like, it's like a pseudo-comedy romance harem thing. And I was like, this is, this yeah. is okay. Like, and I, I was, think among all three of us, I feel like you're the person that has a little bit more patience when it comes to things that are, that, that, that get that harem tag. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I read it and I was like oh this is really good and I was like I kind of yeah. like that it's it's like I don't know I thought the characters were actually pretty like like interesting and I, mm-hmm. I felt like they were going to go like 
I don't know. It felt like the first volume I read, at least, which kind of was like, I guess it would be like the first two or three episodes, I guess, at this point. It okay. Would, it would be, it was, I got the feeling that I was like, well, they kind of like rushed through a lot of the like normal crap that like a harem would take to build up like through several volumes. Like they felt like they rushed through all that. And so I was like, okay, so if I, I say rush, but I mean like they just like I felt like they just moved past it, like all the the griddle, I guess. And so they the could griddle? get to the real meat of the story. Like, you know, I appreciate this metaphor. Um, I am now hungry. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, <laughs> but I, I just really think that like they really just did that, and I was like, okay, well, I don't have any more volumes. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't get any more because there weren't any more out. But I was like, you know, this series could really take off from here. Like they've mm-hmm. got a lot of the annoying aspects that, like, we've already debunked a lot of stuff. Like we're we're moving ahead. Like this is good. The good sign. And then, I, last season, uh, and this is kind of the unfortunate thing, um, is that the quintessential quintuplets came out, which has a very oddly similar premise. Um, <laughs> unrelated, like, it's just one of those things where they're airing back to back. It just happens. It just yeah. happened, and I read quintessential quintuplets, and I was like, oh, this is good. And then... I, I I watched the first episode of this anime, and now granted, I think the manga is still better than whatever I saw in the first episode of the anime. It just lost its sparkle for some reason in the anime, I feel like. Um, and I, I got done, and I was like, man, I just want to go back and read Quintessential Quintuplets now. Like, I just, I just felt, like, so empty. Like... And it had nothing to do with, like, the quality of this show, because it obviously didn't change that much. Mm-hmm. It just... It's just an unfortunate thing where I was like, man, I just feel like Quintuplets did it better. I just... That's just what I feel like. And One of those unfortunate circumstances where just by coincidence there's another show that comes out that just takes the initial premise and does it better kind of thing. Yeah, and it was, it was, and I was so weird because I was like, I was excited for this, and it was the first one I had experience with, so I expected this one to be kind of like, oh, you know, the one I would like better, but it, then I was like, oh, well, maybe it's not. Like, I don't know. What a bummer. I, I don't know. Did anyone else watch it? No. I watched... It, it, it was on my list of things that I thought I might watch, but I ended up just not due to time that I have available. I want to correct something. I said two episodes. I've actually only seen the first episode for this one, and I feel kind of bad about that. Um, but I... Yeah, I've seen the first episode, and as somebody who hasn't seen uh, Quintuple, I thought that this was okay. Especially so far as a harem goes, I think the idea that they're not, like, from day one, episode one, pushing for the harem, I think is okay. I I, I think the idea that it's, like, a dude who's just trying to help these girls out in their situation and is able to individually assist them in, in, like, the issues that they have, Mm -hmm. that's cool. Now, granted, obviously I know because it does have the harem tag and because you yourself even defined it as a harem to me in which it's like not just like oh it's a tag on any chart that they put down and then like two weeks later they get rid of it um but where it's it's actually basically confirmed to be a harem i know that it eventually will get to the point in which like there is potential for romance for all of these different uh girls and the main character but i think so far as far as like the first episode goes i was like as somebody who's usually really adverse to harems, I was like, "This is okay." Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a terrible show either. After saying yeah. all that, I just, I just think it was like, "Oh yeah," like it's, it's still good for what it is. It's just, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's like, just like given. It's just given, given that a, given my new experiences, it's like, oh. <laughs> like I have to give sucks. credit where credit's due. That first episode in which like the main character. 
not only is like, okay, I got to tutor these girls and they're kind of doofuses when it comes to these specific subjects, but the fact that he goes out of his way, even if it's accidentally that he comes across them like after school, but he goes out of his way whenever he does talk to them to actually genuinely help them as people, not just love interests and not just as a tutor, but as just a, as a person to another person. I thought that was really nice. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, he's, he's just trying to genuinely help them, you know? It's just, yeah. it's good. Well, that's refreshing. Yeah, like, and no, it's like... No he... explicit ulterior motives. Well, but that's the thing, though, is that the show does set that up. Because he, if he tutors these people and successfully gets them to pass their tests on the subjects they don't know, because they're geniuses in their field, but they don't want to go into those fields when they go to college... Mm. um and so so he needs to he needs to um tutor them so that they're better in the fields that they want to go into and then can excel in both um Mm. and if he does that as a poor kid he has free tuition like from here on out doesn't have to pay a thing so he is motivated to do that but a lot of the situations that he finds himself in is outside of the situation of being a tutor and then he's just being a good person and that's that's the part that I like, is that the, it's these moments in which he it, it drops the motivation and it, you just see him as like, I feel shitty because I'm uh, because I have association with these individuals, I've gone to know them and I've gone to know the struggles that they're going through and that sucks. So I just want to do something for them. It, right. it is kind of an interesting that. foil to Quintuplets, I think, where it's kind of like, like this anime is like the good version. <laughs> Like, the good version, as in, like, all the characters are very good people. And <laughs> and in Quintuplets, they just are all kind of, like, really mean to each other. <laughs> For, like, the first several episodes. Well, but I guess that's kind of the point, is that, like, it, it, the, it, the difference between the shows being in Quintuplets, it's literally a bunch of sisters that have only had to rely on each other throughout their entire lives. So the fact that there's this newcomer into their group, they're like, fuck you, I'm not gonna listen to you. Yeah. Uh, whereas in this situation granted there is some like they've gone through previous tutors um the fact that he even like reached out to them in the first place and was like i might be able to do something for you they're willing to give it a chance yeah Mm -hmm. so i think that would be the major difference as far as like the way that the plot is structured yeah and i don't know it's i think i think they're both good like i still i still like them both like yeah i like you probably like quintuple so far better um but it's one of those situations where i've just seen more of it probably too so it's you know well and it could be that it is the better show but that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad show yeah i think they're both good i think they have to both their own merits you know so yeah 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 yeah. Mm I was, um, yeah, I'm glad that you said that because I was, I was interested to see as the person who's a little bit more of an expert on these shows since Zach and I tend to avoid them. Uh, I was interested to see how you felt about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel pretty okay about it, honestly. So, yeah. to be, to be fair, I was actually fairly interested in it, and I've been like, I have it on my queue on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't get around to actually taking time to watch it, considering it's a, a bit of a hectic time right now, and I've only got so much time to dedicate to stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, uh, that's actually very refreshing, and I'm super psyched to actually get started watching this thing. Yeah. Now, I, wa- I want to point out for you that as far as my feelings on it go... That's only for the first episode. I've not seen any of the others. But Matt can tell you a lot more. And and, and I guess if Matt's vouching for it, then it should be all right. I, I'm just, like, the only, like, real concern that I have is, like, how, uh, I guess as Kyle said earlier, voyeuristic it's going to get in the second episode. Um, I'm a little nervous, especially because in the preview like, they showed that there was a, a I mean, new girl that was being introduced who was very much I, like I'm the tomboy. I'm, I'm and pretty. I'm Google pretty lukewarm on her character in general. So okay. okay. Um. Uh, but there's always one. Yeah. At least. <laughs> now, granted, I will say on the instance, uh, not as coming from a feminist perspective, but I got a weakness for tom girls. <laughs> So, oh, we already so all I, knew that, buddy. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking shocker. So, when I saw that preview, I was like, 
It might be able to keep watching this show, but it's not for any reason of the actual quality of the show. It's just that they got me by they got me by the weakness. I'm just like, oh shit! No, oh, I gotta watch that second season, that second episode. I have to say, she's a. I think she's a good character. I'm just not a fan of those types of characters. So. That's fair. That's totally fair. Mm-hmm. So, different strokes for different folks. Yeah, that's as they say. Um, even if they're. Well, I was going to make a swimming joke, but we'll move on. <laughs> we're not talking about free, though. I wish we were. Well, also, this character that we're talking about is a swimmer, so. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear I can hear the disappointment. Like, <laughs> he hasn't even said anything, but I'm just, I feel it, so. What are you talking about? Eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, we already talked about that show. sorry excuse me um moving on (laughs) um yeah (laughs) oh my god what what other shows because because zach you said that you had one last show that you hadn't uh that that you hadn't talked about yet (laughs) breathe oh breathe it was uh i have really enjoyed um Midnight Occult Civil Servants. Okay, oh, which I know that? nothing about this show. Have yeah. either of you watched that? No, oh, that's this one. Okay. All right. Yeah, the one that's ugly is Sin, but is really good. Okay. <laughs> now, I Honestly, the art just uh, kind of like, I don't know. The art didn't look very good, so. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, the, their budget is pocket lint. Um, you mean lit in films? Just... Yeah. This show right. looks awful. Okay. Um, it's visually not traditionally appealing. Um, I like the way it looks personally. Um, it, it could definitely use maybe like five dollars thrown at it. <laughs> two feet of animators. That's um, horrible. What the animators you... are probably working really hard. Okay. I I know I know I know I know I'm, I'm just. That's that. That's the whole conversation around the show is that it looks really fucking bad, and I feel like that does the show a real disservice, because the the whole idea around this is that, um, this uh, dude uh, Arata Miyako, fresh out of college, is looking for a civil servant's job and gets put on a night shift gig, and. Uh, he finds out that his job is to uh, go with others and try to be liaisons between humans and um, members of occult species and such. Like, and like par- paranormal and... kind of thing? Yeah, 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 like fairies and angels and demons Ooh, and Tengu and shit okay, like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is like right up my alley. Yep, yep. Um, and it, it turns out that for whatever reason... Um, no one but our, our main boy Arata can actually understand these other species. Really? Um, but he can for some reason. It's uh, there's some plot line that is apparently like he's a reincarnation of an ancient uh, Japanese figure, uh, Abinoseme, who is a uh, who is thought to be like an exorcist, but also like an astrologer and all sorts of shit there's a bunch of shit oh, for boy. people like abe no Same resurrected yeah. in some way um but basically yeah it's it's this really kind of fascinating show that is taking a, a again like a weird um a civil servant liaison sort of thing between the human and the occult world um there is some definite like kind of stakes and drama to it because there's a weird trickster character that's thrown into the mix um who uh, man i guess if you're dealing with like fairies and shit that kind of makes sense yeah I, i can't properly pronounce this character's name like Kuehue Kyoto or something it's a it's a I know that name Mayan yeah, yeah. Trickster God. and he's a major antagonist but like Ooh. also is is like a, a friend of Arata because he's like oh my god you're Abe no say mate my bud what's up it's been a while and Arata's like what the fuck are you talking about Oh, okay. I don't so know it's who it's, that is. So it's it's borrowing from a couple of different cultures and like using a lot of like international yeah. like 
Um, yeah, yeah. So it's not all just stuff. like Japanese folklore. It is like worldwide Ooh, stuff, and it's it's really oh, interesting to see right how these different alley. things. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how they kind of work together, and bring in a sort of like modern uh, scientific, but also like kind of crime procedural twist to it. Oh, interesting. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's it, it's a lot of fun. Um, again, you have to be willing to go along with a show that is not quite as like visually polished as some other stuff because it just doesn't have the money for it i don't know if it's money or if it just like literally has not been allocated the amount of like resources or it just kind of doesn't look great but man i love it a lot i think it has a lot of really interesting potential to it um i've enjoyed every single episode i've watched so far it's a lot of fun for me um I know a lot of people have been shitting on it just because of how it looks, and I think it's really doing the show a disservice for what it's doing. That's unfortunate. I feel like, and granted, I do think that there is merit in talking about, like, it's not well animated, and and that can definitely be detriment to the show. Mm Because I think, in general, if there's, you know, if it's poorly animated, even if it's a great story, that's definitely going to impact your watching of it. Right, right. I have literally literally watched slideshows <laughs> that had a fantastic story to them and i was like this is great i'm, I'm totally down <laughs> yeah and it's not like the show is like poorly animated like it's not as though there's some weird dead in between frames and cells that are blatantly obvious it's just that it has a consistent lower degree of quality in terms of like design and overall animation. it's just unpolished or i mean it just doesn't it doesn't look like a show that has a huge budget is all mm. okay. um, like it, it doesn't have any actual issues with like the uh flow of animation like it looks just fine in terms it's just... of like how everything moves it's just, just kind of bland it's just kind of bland i guess yeah, it's like, um, Matt, do you remember fucking, um, Sabagebu? Yeah. From way back in the day? Yeah, so, like, it, it looked, it, 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 it moved just fine, but it was ugly as shit to watch. Mm, okay. Yeah, I only watched yeah, a little it, bit of it, like but that. yeah, it was... I mean, good. Good, good. Okay. Uh, noted. Um, yeah. But no, like, yeah, I, I don't really hear anyone talking about the show, which is a shame, because I think it's really interesting. Um, it's also got a weird, like, comfy adjacent vibe to it, but that's kind of just kinda because, weird, like, but okay, that that that's just more a personal thing because I kind of like these kind of dumb, weird procedural things. In that oh, sense. okay, where it's like each episode is a is a different monster oh. of the week kind of thing. I mean, sort of, but there is definitely a larger overarching plot that is followed through. Right, but that's true of so. a lot of like serial dramas kind of thing mm-hmm. okay yeah so it's i'm it's, understanding the kind of show this is yeah it's it's rad i i don't i don't give a fuck what anyone else has to say about this it's a great show yeah it just all right i'll, needs I'll uh, to be I'll given a shot add that to my my watch list then yeah because i'll give it a shot at least you know yeah that's the the idea Perfect. of like modern takes on like old folklore and tale that's right. Yeah, up like my that. Alley. That's 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 yeah. straight up your shit. That's dude. straight up what I enjoy. So, yeah, uh, like, I'm not here to say that it's a contender for like my anime or anyone's anime of the season. But you're just enjoying but, it. Yeah, like it's you can enjoy things. It's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's it's definitely refreshing for this season. I think, um, and it's really refreshing in terms of like the the kind of show it's attempting to be. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay. That about does it for me. I don't th- think I've watched anything else this season. No. I mean, there's I... there's a couple of things that I desperately, desperately want to watch, but I just can't. Um, Thanks, Carol and Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah, fucking same. The fact that Netflix pulled that up and i just now saw that it's going to be a two core i'm pissed hate you netflix (laughs) i'm so pissed 
Now, probably they'll do something like Little Witch Academia, which, like, they'll call the first 12 episodes of season one, and they'll release that as its own thing. Oh, I don't, I care less about that. I hope it's more like Violet Evergarden, where they release it at the season after. You know, it's done, and not, like, wait, like, Kakiguri, and wait a whole fucking year and a half to release it. Good gosh. Yeah, no, I'm pissed. Because the synopsis for this, I was like, yes, everything about this is... Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and then we don't get to see it until they're fucking done airing it. So <sighs> dumb. Netflix. I'm so annoyed. I could be mad at Funimation, but honestly, Netflix still makes me really upset. <laughs> now, I will say something that Netflix did release this season that is, I think is technically a part of the season is uh, Rila Kuma and Keoru. The stop motion animation anime. What is that? What? You guys haven't like heard about real, this? Or, wait, wait, like real Akuma, like the 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 brown teddy bear looking thing. Yes. Oh, this is some like uh fucking uh Sanrio boys shit. N- it is, but think about it more like um, fuck. What was that other one that Netflix picked up? That was the um girl who liked heavy metal like the Gretzuko. Red Gretzuko. it's very much a gretsuko yeah. in that instead of telling a story about like hey it's stop motion and cutesy like one of my all-time favorite shows that has to do with the penguin newt newt motherfucker newt, newt. um instead of that it's very much a gretsuko in that it's about a woman like dealing with the hardships of of modern day life and and going in and out of a job and having these struggles but it's just her family is these other characters that are like you know teddy bear-esque and like there's even like a i think like a tiny little cheap cheap that's like the the child of the family and Mm. but it's her dealing with these very real very adult things but just doing so in a very cute package that is stop motion like like old school stop motion. I don't even think that they use like CGI models that they cut the frames on. I think this is actually like OG stop motion. Wow, holy shit, chief. And it like the trailer that they came out with this thing looked fucking amazing. It looked so good. Now, I haven't watched it. Uh but I've literally have had it pulled up in a, I I have it pulled up in a tab cuz I'm just like ready to go. Um, but that got released uh, late, 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 late April. So just like, I guess like a few days ago. Yeah, it came out the 19th. So uh, as of the recording of this podcast, it came out six days ago. Okay. Um, I mean, that does seem up your alley. Yeah. Uh, okay. and, and I wanted to call it out on the podcast because it's technically a part of the season and like everything about it just looks amazing. So if you got a Netflix s- subscription, definitely check that out. Yeah, all right. I can um, take that. But then the other thing that I'm still desperately waiting for is a movie <laughs> that is coming out this season. Uh, Birthday Wonderland, which is... I super want to watch that. Oh my gosh, the trailer for that looked amazing. Just the colors, all the different places that they travel to, and like, it seems like the overall story seems really fascinating and interesting. It has a little bit of intrigue with it, along with like the really like wonderful, joyous, like Ghibli esque environments that these characters are in. Um, but then on top of that, on a personal note, it um, the lead character designer for the film is Ilya Kuvshinov, which is a Russian artist that moved to Japan, and um, they are hands down one of my favorite artists of all time. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real with you, Chief. That's the only real reason I'm interested in it. I don't know anything else about it except that Kushinov is the character designer. You haven't seen any of the trailers or anything? Oh, dude, you should see the trailers. The tra- because that's the thing. If it was like Ily Kushinov, and then I see the trailer and it looks like a pile of shit, I'm just gonna be sad. I'm not gonna go watch it. Um, that's fair. But the fact that it's one of my favorite artists of all time. And it's their character designs in this just wonderful and imaginative world based on a children's book. Um, And the the fact that you have these like really interesting ideas of like them going on this fantastical, magical journey. But then at the same time, you have these like dark characters that are trying to shape the world in a different way. 
um it just looks great it looks so good i'm so excited for that movie and um i need to know whenever that movie is going to be coming out in america because i believe it comes out in japan as of the recording of this podcast tomorrow i wonder if they'll have an american release that's what i'm hoping for um because it looks because it's Ilya Kuvshinov and their character designs, it looks so much different from any other anime I've really seen in a while. Mm-hmm. It's a very unique style. Very, very unique style as far as those characters go. And the fact that that unique style is being coupled with these beautiful, beautiful backgrounds and scenery and these this wonderful, fantastic world that they're building. I need to see this movie. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping that it comes out uh i'm hoping that it comes out in um, in america soon in for mm. even if it's like selected showing i don't care i'll drive three miles or not three miles three, three miles, miles. <laughs> i'll drive three <laughs> miles you're, i'm you're a really, lazy motherfucker really put yourself out there yeah <laughs> no i'll drive i'll drive three hours to go see it because that 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 seems absolutely up my alley and absolutely something that i just need in my life mm-hmm. yeah but yeah I think that's the last thing that I wanted to talk about because I don't think there was anything else that I really wanted to get into. Matt, anything else for you? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, to think about it for a second there. I, well, I, I, I contemplated something, but it's fine. We we'll no, 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 okay, I, no, no, I mean, no, no, no. Hang you, out now. I'm no, I'm. Sure. No, I'm yeah. I, it was a, it was gonna be a stupid joke. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, I'm tempted, but at this point, I think we'd be pulling. So, um, yeah, I guess that wraps it up. Is there? Um, so, there's nothing else you guys want to talk about as far as this season no, goes. I'm, I'm excited. There, there, there was a lot of flops compared to what I normally watch, but at the same time, I also watch just more than what I normally watch. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the na- that's, that's the nature right. of the beast. So, yeah. So uh, I'm so excited. It seems like it will be a pretty good season. Um, it's just you're going to have your specifics rather than like in general, the season as a whole is like amazing. And every almost every show that's coming out is, is fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is more of a yeah, we're not this is like more of a moderate season, season than, uh, than the last couple of been, which have been just jam packed full of goodies. Mm-hmm. A lot of goodies. So a lot, lot of goodies. goodies. Gotta... Yeah. <laughs> You, you got to find what works for you and just kind of stick with it. Yeah, it's. It, I guess a comparison is like this This would be like, well, last season would be if you open up a box and it's just all of the cookies you know and love in the same baker's dozen. But then like you open up this box and it's like life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Well, it's, it's, it's more like <laughs> this is more like, you know, like getting uh, going to a donut shop and getting to choose your 13 donuts and then getting one that is already prepackaged. And, and then a whole bunch of others that are just and then you're the like, well, I'm going to eat these thing. because yeah. they're here and I paid for them. But like, they're not my favorites, but I still like them. Because they're donuts. <laughs> and then I guess the, the equivalent for the shorts is if you bought like a separate thing of, of, of uh, yeah, it's donut like, holes. Yeah. <laughs> and then most of them turned out to be piles of shit they're, in donut form. They're like <laughs> and that. And then you had the one shorts, that was okay. Yeah, they're like that. The shorts are like. They're like that uh, extra dollar like that you pay to get an additional little side thing. And it's yeah, like. Yeah, like and whenever it's you're like, checking out with a. Uh, a Domino's order, and they're like, "Do you want some donut bites with that for only three dollars more?" Yeah, and you're like, they're... "I kind of regret getting these, <laughs> but like, th- they were okay for a little bit." Uh, they're like if someone farted in your face and you asked for more, hoping that the rest might be okay, <laughs> and they just still aren't. <laughs> well, that one smelled like shit, but maybe this next one will smell like roses. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of like my analogy be better. Pooper, yeah. Maybe I'm just hungry, but <laughs> go get yourself some food, man. All right, no, I guess that's I'm that's done. it for us. We'll we'll catch I'm everybody gonna... next time. I yeah, please stop me from talking about farting. <laughs> please, for the love of God. All right, <laughs> goodbye. Thanks, guys. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thanks for listening. As always, you can find all our podcast articles, videos, etc. at thebackloggers.com. Our intro-outro song is The Bear by Shell in the Pit, who you can find on Spotify as well as Bandcamp. And we'd love to hear from y'all either in the comments on our site or any feedback you want to leave us on whatever podcast platform you like. iTunes, SoundCloud, or write it down in a haiku and amaze us with your poeticism. And as always, we're on Twitter at the underscore backlogger, so come hang with us. See you later.